Hi there. A few months ago, I made a video of making Brazilian coxinha in a cast iron Dutch oven. Coxinha are balls of cooked chicken wrapped in a tasty dough and fried in oil. They're very delicious, but I was amazed by the simple and wonderful dough used for wrapping these chicken croquettes together. This dough was extremely easy to make. It held together well, it wasn't lumpy, it kneaded well, and it shaped easily. It was also very tasty, and this dough was so much fun to work with, I had to wonder what else it could be used for, and I thought it would be interesting to see if this dough could be used to make a pot pie. And so, let's find out and make chicken pot pies and some vintage cast iron skillets using Brazilian coxinha dough. I'll say in advance that this dough did not give a light and flaky crust, but personally, I didn't mind that at all. It's no more than adding a few spices to four cups of flour. Then we add the same amount of chicken broth to a cast iron Dutch oven and bring it to a rolling boil. Then we simply stir the flour mix into the broth and it quickly becomes a very spongy dough. It's much easier to work with than a water-based dough because the dough doesn't form gluten and it keeps its shape. However, this dough is boiling hot and we need to let it cool for about an hour before we can shape it. This gives us time to begin preparing the filling for the pot pies. We start preheating the oven to 400 degrees and also start heating a large cast iron skillet on the stove top. Then we take two pounds of chicken breasts and cut them into bite-sized pieces. Once this is done, we chop up some onion and celery and that's all the prep work we need. The onion and celery can go into the same bowl because we'll be adding them to the pan at the same time. By now, our cast iron pan is good and hot, and once the oil is melted and hot, away we go. This may be crowding the pan, but that's really not a problem here. We can reserve the extra liquid from the chicken and add it back into the pan later. It takes about 10 to 15 minutes to thoroughly cook the chicken. You'll know the chicken is ready when it's no longer bouncy and rubbery and you can easily cut pieces in half with your spatula. Now we add the celery and onions and then add a few simple spices to give it extra flavor including salt, pepper, garlic powder, and thyme. That includes one of my favorite spices, smoked paprika. This really helps to give it a kick and some extra color as well. Once everything is ready, we melt some butter in the pan to begin making a roux and prepare the gravy used in our pot pie mix because this is much better than just adding cream of mushroom soup. We stir in half a cup of flour to make it good and thick. Then we begin adding cream a little at a time. One thing about making gravy in cast iron is it's easy to make the gravy too thick it's better to add the cream a little bit at a time rather than adding it all at once because you can control how thin it becomes and keep it from becoming too liquid. Once we've used all our cream, we then start adding chicken broth a little at a time to thin it out and bring the gravy to the right consistency. It's a lot easier to add broth and thin the gravy out rather than add flour when the gravy is too thin. What's more, this makes a gravy with no lumps. Now we can add some peas and carrots and stir it all together because we really don't need to make everything from scratch. Even here, we can keep adding broth to the pan to keep the gravy from getting too thick. 
And of course, it wouldn't be a pot pie without lots of parsley. And of course, it's necessary to taste test the filling to make sure it meets your standards. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> there we go. This is an excuse to break out two vintage pans from Birmingham Stove and Range and one from Lodge. We grease the pans with shortening and now we can prepare the pie crusts from our dough. This dough is very easy to knead and unlike a bread dough, it isn't even sticky. It holds its shape together and it's very easy to shape it into pieces to fit into the pan. We simply press the dough into the shape of the pan, and that only takes a couple of minutes of working it with our fingers. Then move on to the next one. And here we get to speed up time a little bit. And finally, the third pan. As you can see, this is really not difficult at all, and the result is certainly worth the effort. Now we can fill each pan with the pie filling and use the ladle to level it off. Just remember, you want to keep folks from sampling the pie filling over and over while filling the pie. The scent of this certainly has to be experienced for yourself. Now we take the rest of the dough and shape it into a cover to top the pie. We place it into the pan and simply pinch the edges together to seal the pie. And on to the second pie, which we're speeding up for your convenience. And finally, we cover the third and last pie. Finally, we brush the top of the pies with egg wash. And we have three pot pies ready for baking. And into the oven go the pies to bake for 30 minutes. Hot out of the oven, here are our cast iron pot pies. The pie crust is solid enough to turn the pie out of the pan, and it's ready to cut open and enjoy. These pot pies didn't have a flaky crust like you might want in a pot pie, but I enjoyed this crust on its own. It was sturdy and chewy, but it wasn't dried out and it had a wonderful flavor that made this pot pie very enjoyable. This is very different from a typical pot pie and it's certainly an order of magnitude more delicious than those frozen microwave pot pies sold at the supermarket. This was a lot of fun to make and it really wasn't difficult at all. I really recommend giving this a try yourself, and if you do try it, please post your comments below and let us know how it turned out. Trying new things is one of the greatest adventures you can have in cooking, and this is certainly something new that I hope you do try for yourself, and especially, I hope you like it. I certainly did, and I also hope you enjoyed watching this.